So obviously, guys, Alpine, after the Oscar Piastri saga, are now wanting to replace him with a new driver. And it appears that they are going to try and replace him with a certain French driver. And this could lead to AlphaTauri then replacing Gasly with a driver currently racing an IndyCar, an American driver called Colton Herter, who is probably good enough to get on the F1 grid, but currently doesn't have the super license points to get on the grid. So what we're going to do in this video is look at the whole situation in full and whether Herter does um, or how he can possibly get on the grid for next season. And again, just in general, the whole situation. So, yeah, Oscar Piastri, again, he'll be racing for McLaren next season. Fernando Alonso obviously racing for Aston Martin next season. So Alpine are desperate for a new driver. And the driver they are gunning for is this man, Pierre Gasly, obviously a French driver. And uh, I'd say a pretty good driver. He's not one of the best on the apps on the uh, Formula 1 grid, but definitely a good driver. And looking at the drivers available on the grid, he's probably one of the best available on the grid. Does he deserve, though, an Alpine seat? Well, looking at the stats, I think we would have to say yes. This is his record at AlphaTauri since 2020. So that's this is pretty much, what, two and a half seasons worth of data. One race win, even though it was in quite fortunate circumstances, still did brilliantly to hold on for the race win. Two podiums, obviously one of them being the win. 14 top six finishes, 34 Q3 appearances. The majority of those, I think 18 of those, being in 2021. Very, very quick years over a single lap. And has also had two top 10 finishes in the World Drivers' Championship for Alpha Tauri since 2020. This season not going as well for him, but he definitely deserves to be in the Alpine. I mean, Alpine are not a front-running team, but if you look at, you know, who is remaining on the grid, who Alpha Tauri, or not Alpha Tauri, that Alpine can go and get. Um, I mean, obviously there's Daniel Ricciardo who's available, possibly Mick Schumacher, but I'd say... Looking at the last two or three years, I think Gasly, maybe not the last three years, but the last, you know, this year, last year, I'd say Gasly has been uh, better than Ricardo and Schumacher. And I think does deserve, to be honest, to move to the Alpine team because I think he's done everything really he could have done at Alpha Tauri. Now, Red Bull, normally you'd expect them to replace Gasly with a driver from F2 or F3. And that's what their hope was for um, 2023 possibly or even 2024 is that they would have a driver perform well enough in F2 or F3 to earn a seat for them um, for Alpha Tauri in 2023 or 2024 even. But in F2 this season, the Red Bull drivers just have not done well enough, which is why Red Bull are looking elsewhere. Here are the F2 standings. And I've, what I've done here with the middle column you can see is I've put, instead of the teams they race for, I've put what academy they belong to. So you can see there, Felipe Drogovic leading the championship. He doesn't belong to any academy at all. Uh, Terry Portier, he belongs to the Sauber Academy. Obviously, Sauber um, are the Alfa Romeo team. And then, obviously, Logan Sargent-Williams, Jack Dewan Alpine. And then, uh, Enzo Fittipaldi, Yuri Vips, and Marcus Armstrong uh, don't have uh, any academy ties at the minute. Obviously, Yuri Vips was cut from the Red Bull Academy a couple months ago for racist remarks on stream uh, but then you have Liam Lawson Ayomu Awasa I think I might mispronounce that but yeah um, I've tried my best with that name and then um, Jayan Deruvula I think it is they are three Red Bull Academy drivers and also you have I think is it uh, Dennis Hauger or Jake Hauger I can't remember his name exactly uh, he was F3 champion in 2021 and he is uh, in 12th in the championship. But yeah, all four of those drivers simply haven't done w uh, good enough. Liam Lawson, even though he's in the top five of the championship and he's had a decent season in F2, to be over 100 points behind Felipe Drogovic is simply not good enough. I mean, Felipe is a good driver, but I wouldn't say Felipe is, in terms of pure talent, the best driver on this uh, grid for F2. I'd probably say Teo Portier is the absolute best on the F2 grid in terms of talent, but they just simply, the Red Bull Academy drivers haven't, they just haven't done well enough. Um, Liam Lawson, the best really he can do in the F2 championship before the season ends is finish in third place. By the way, obviously, these standings before the two races for F2 at Monza, just to clarify, uh, in case you guys are wondering why 
the uh, championship standings are now different to what I am showing on screen. But simply, the Red Bull Academy drivers have not been good enough and haven't been really in title contention in uh, 2022, which is why Red Bull want this man, Colton Herter, who races for Andretti in IndyCar, to race for them in 2023 for the AlphaTauri team. But Colton Herter, at the moment, does not have enough super license points. Obviously, we'll get into that in a second. But let's look firstly at his career um, so far in IndyCar. Obviously, IndyCar, one of the most premier single-seater series in the world. And this is his record in IndyCar since 2019. And when you consider that Andretti have not been that great I mean, IndyCar in the last few years, this is a very impressive record. Seven race wins, 11 podiums, 24 top six finishes, nine pole positions, and he finished third in the Drivers' Championship in IndyCar in 2020. And again, Andretti have not been, say, one of the best teams in IndyCar. Um, they've been on a bit of a downslope for the last few years compared to what they were doing, um, say, say seven or eight years ago even, for the Andretti team also. He is the youngest race winner and youngest pole winner in IndyCar series history. So he's definitely a very good driver, there is no doubt about that. And if we look at the IndyCar championship standings for this year to see how he's doing in 2022, to be honest, considering that the uh, front of the field in the driver's standings is dominated by Penske or Chip Ganassi drivers, I think Colton Herter is doing pretty well. Also, Alexander Rossi doing pretty well as well. Uh, Rossi has been a very good IndyCar driver for the last few years. But yeah, to be eighth and to be doing really the best he could have done so far this season when Penske and Kip Ganassi are just, you know, so much better is, I think, quite impressive for Colton being in eighth place and also being ahead of the McLaren there in P10. Obviously, just ahead of him, or not just ahead of him, but uh, almost 100 points are clear of um, Herter is Pato O'Ward, another highly rated driver for McLaren. But again, because Andretti are not that competitive really at the moment in, um, in IndyCar, this is quite impressive what Colton has been doing for um, the Andretti team in uh, IndyCar. Now, is he good enough? to get into um into formula one to be honest i would say yes i think he is if you look at again his indycar record and you know, the race wins pole positions and what he's done for andretti um since he joined indycar in 2019 i think he absolutely deserves a chance i think there is no doubt about that if you have you know latifi on the grid we've had mazepin obviously on the grid in the last couple of years um, you know, he absolutely deserves his chance. Will he be a top Formula 1 driver? I'm not quite sure he would be. I think probably at best he would be a good midfield driver from what I've seen so far because I do think the level of Formula 1 is still quite a bit higher than IndyCar. But he would. I think there's definitely a good chance he would be a success in Formula 1. But he does not, like I said, have the super license points. Now let's get on to that. So, the super license is obviously run by the FIA. Obviously, this on screen is the FIA president, Mohammed Ben Sulayem. And let's get into quickly what you need for a super license um, and also the criteria in terms of what points get you what in what series. So, let's get on to that now. So, to qualify for an FIA racing super license, an applicant must meet the requirements of the FIA's International Sporting Code. And these are the requirements. A minimum of 18 years old at the start of their first F1 competition. Obviously, Colton is, I think, 22, 23, I think, is Colton. Um, an existing holder of an international grade A competition license. I think he is, uh, Colton. A holder of a valid dri driving license. I'm pretty sure he is as well. Uh, passing of an FIA theory test on knowledge of F1 sporting codes and regulations when applying for the first time completed at least 80% of each of the two full seasons of any of the single-seater championships reported in Supplement 1 of the regulations. And finally, the most important part, accumulated at least 40 points over the previous three seasons in any combination of the championships reported in Supplement 1 of the regulations. So 
40 points is what you need. And co uh, currently, Colton has 32. So it's close, but just not close enough. But let's get into what points get you what in uh, the different series. So when comparing Formula 2 and IndyCar, the two series to get the most points out of all of the other um, series, Formula 2 and IndyCar. So for winning the championship, you get the same amount of points, which is you know fair enough. But then, from second place in the championship all the way down to 10th, it becomes, quite frankly, a bit unfair. As, yeah, for second and third in the championship, if you finish there in Formula 2, you get the same amount of super license points as you would um, if you won the F2 championship, which I've got to say doesn't really make any sense because you shouldn't really be getting as many points as the actual winner of the championship. But there you go. But you can look at IndyCar... IndyCar only gets 30 for second place and 20 for third. And then IndyCar uh, gets only 10 super license points for fourth in the championship, whilst Formula 2 gets 30. And then you can see, as it works its way down to 10th, that Formula 2 ends up getting more points for each position down to P10, except, again, for first position. So the only way, really, it's fair is if you actually win the IndyCar series. But as I showed... Colton is not in a team that can win the IndyCar Championship right now. And if you watch IndyCar, that is pretty clear to see that that is not going to happen, that Colton is going to uh, win the IndyCar Championship. And this, um, you know, th how this works is definitely unfair. Now, I will say it is absolutely understandable as to why they don't give IndyCar as many points as Formula 2. It's because IndyCar does not fall officially under the um, FIA umbrella like Formula 2, Formula 3, Formula E, and uh, WEC does, as you can see there, as you go through down the order. And it's not part of the, um, say, the proper FIA system. So I completely understand why the system is the way it is, but that does not mean that that is the correct way of, you know, the system being run. And IndyCar absolutely should have at least the same amount of points super license points that formula 2 has for each of the top 10 positions not just the same for f for first position because indycar even though you do get in formula 2 at times some drivers who are you know too good i would say for indycar and definitely good enough for formula 1 if you look at the overall grid for indycar and compare it to formula 2 the indycar grid is stronger it's a more competitive series it's a much harder series to to race in and do well in than Formula 2. So I think IndyCar absolutely deserves the points for, uh, or the same amount of points compared to Formula 2. But what does Colton need if he's going to get onto the Formula 1 grid? Because obviously he's got 32 points at the minute, and if he was to finish 8th in the championship where he is currently, that would put him only up to 35 points. So let's get into the, I guess, permutations, you could say, uh, now. Yeah, it's 32 points on his current license. Needs eight more to qualify for F1 eligibility. One, and this is one thing I did find in my uh, research, one license point is awarded for practice session but in F1 if 100 kilometers at least is completed during one practice session. So they could, AlphaTauri or Red Bull, they could run Colton in the practice sessions remaining for the rest of the season. You know, Singapore, Japan, uh, USA, Mexico, uh, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. And that might get him enough points to get onto the grid. Again, only if he does at least 100 kilometers um, in at least one, uh, pr or during one practice session. Which, I mean, would be hard to do. But, you know, if they've got to do it, they've got to do it. So that is one way of getting him onto um, the Formula One grid. And to be honest, because we are towards the end of the motorsport season, coming back to this page now, I don't really see how Colton can get onto the grid for next season. Because unless once uh, IndyCar finishes for the year, which I think actually is, um, I think uh, this weekend I'm recording this video, I think is when it does finish, um, is the last Grand Prix of the season, I believe. Uh, in IndyCar. The only thing he could do is race in 
a series in possibly Asia that races during the winter that maybe would get him enough uh, super license points. To be honest, I don't know exactly what series that would be. Maybe next season, instead of racing an IndyCar, he could race in super formulas. You can see there, uh, slightly down from uh, the top three or four championships there. If he races in super formula next season, and even if he doesn't win the championship, if he was to finish in say fourth place or fifth place if he gets the three points for eighth in IndyCar he would if he finishes in the top five of the championship in Super Formula be good enough to get on the grid then for 2024 but what Red Bull want is they want Colton to have an exception and him to be allowed through despite him not having the points necessary now in my opinion I do not think he should be given an exception or an exemption whatever you want to call it the reason it's because it's not a good precedent to set because we don't want um, teams going for drivers um, who, you know, haven't got the points yet. And, you know, because, you know, some drivers, what I'm trying to explain here is some drivers who could be attractive to certain teams might be attractive for non-racing reasons, for example. So obviously, Nicholas Latifi is on the F1 grid because he, um, you know, he, he's not terrible, but it's mostly because of the financial package he does bring. Now, if you don't have the super license system in place, then teams have a free reign to go and search for drivers who aren't absolutely terrible, but do bring a massive financial package with them to come to the team. And that is why... I don't think we should uh, give Colton um, a pass or you know wave him through the system because it wouldn't set a good precedent uh, for the future. Because I think it would be, you know, if they were if they were to allow Colton through uh, with this system, I think it would uh, be abused. This system in the future by a team, possibly Williams, who are looking for a pay driver, and um, you know maybe they'll look for a driver that. As a big financial package, maybe he doesn't have enough points, but if he's close enough, maybe they'll apply for um, him to have some sort of exemption from the current license uh, regulation. So I don't think we should allow Colton to just, again, be waved through and be allowed into F1, even though he doesn't have the super license points. The best way to solve this is, if I go back to this, is to redo the super license point system and quite simply, give IndyCar the same amount of points as Formula 2 for each of the top 10 positions in the championship. That's all you have to do. And I think that is the best solution long term, rather than just giving Colton an exception and then not addressing the actual issue, which is that IndyCar does not get enough super license points and definitely doesn't get enough for what it deserves. So... Again, I don't believe he should get an exemption or an exception, whatever you want to call it. The best way to address this is to give IndyCar the points they deserve because that will then benefit not just Colton, but future um, drivers, say American drivers, young American drivers who want to maybe get into Formula 1. And not just American drivers, but others as well that maybe can't uh, find their way through Formula 3 and Formula 2 in that system or maybe live um, in America and find it easier to go through the American system rather than the European system, it would make it um, so there's more of an opportunity there for those drivers to possibly get onto the Formula 1 grid at a future date if the points are there for them to, you know, be um, or be able to qualify for Formula 1. But there is no doubt about it that Colton Herter is absolutely good enough for Formula 1, but I'm not quite sure we should accept him or oh, give him exemption from the super license system. Let me know, guys, in the comment section what you think about Colton Herter and this whole uh, controversy and what you think should happen with this. And let me know what you think just in general of the whole situation as we wait to see whether Colton Herter will indeed be on the grid for 2023.